So, is anyone familiar? I know everybody's familiar with soulmates. So, everybody knows what a soulmate is. Is anybody familiar with karmic relationships and twin flame relationships? Yes, no. Is anybody familiar with karmic relationships or twin flame relationships before we get started? Or if anyone's never heard of it, let me know. If you have, let me know. If you've heard of it, but you kind of have an idea of what they are, then let me know. Kind of, but not really. Kind of, but not really. That means you... You've heard of them. Okay. So, does anyone, can anyone tell me, um, of the three, do you believe that you've been in any of these types of relationships? A soulmate, a karmic relationship, or a twin flame? You're in a karmic relationship. Oh, that's, oh, okay. Alrighty then. How's that going? It's good. So I got one karmic relationship. And we don't even have to be talking about your current relationship. Like, do you feel like you've ever been in any, any of these types of relationships before? I'm going to try this one more time. I don't know how to do this. She's been in all of these. Yeah. Some people have, have uh, had the, uh, the, the fortune and maybe not so good fortune. She said, child. Exactly. <laughs> To be in all three, um, because it it's it could happen. It could happen. It's it's not likely to happen. All three it doesn't happen all the time, but you could have all three of these relationships in one lifetime. So we are going to talk about the differences between the relationships and the characteristics of these relationships, and we're going to try to talk about how to get through these relationships. So. Let's see. I have my notes here. <laughs> it's fortunate, but still not fortunate. So I have my notes here. So if I look down, it's because I'm, I'm reading my notes because I wanted to stay on task. We're only going to spend about an hour to an hour and a half tonight because I don't want to keep you guys long because I'm sure some of you have to go to work. And um, I don't want to keep you up all night. Um, first, before we get started, as I always say, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and your relaxing Sunday to come in, talk to me, and watch me uh, babble on on this screen about uh, relationships and identifying the different relationships. So I do appreciate everyone being here. Um, I, I just love having these types of conversations with you guys. And because I have so much free time for the month of April, we will be doing another live um, I'm thinking my next live is going to be on <clears throat> manifesting through sex. Yeah, we're going to talk about manifesting through sex. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about these karmic relationships. Okay, so, so tonight we'll be discussing three types of relationships. Your soulmate relationship, your karmic relationship, and your twin flame relationship. Um, while you may go through life feeling that you've never experienced any of these, more than likely you have, but you just didn't know that you were in this relationship or um, you, you didn't realize that that's what you were going through. Um, a lot of times these relationships kind of uh, come into our life before we are very uh, self-aware of ourselves. So you probably at this point in your life um, a little bit more aware of yourself, a little bit more conscious of who you are can probably um, look back in hindsight and may be able to determine whether or not you've been in one of the three or maybe all three of these relationships. Um, let's see. So our goal tonight is to learn how to identify the characteristics of each of these beautiful relationships because they are beautiful relationships and they're teaching relationships but sometimes they can be um, very complex. Hey, honey. <laughs> Very, I'm, I'm also doing an Instagram live, so if I look over here, then that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, as we go through each relationship, you'll find that you have some similarities that go across the board for all three of these relationships. 
yeah they are draining um, so there may be characteristics that are the same in each one of these relationships but there always also is going, going to be very distinguishing differences that will let you know that this is not just like any other relationship one thing I will point out is the common denominator in all these relationships are these relationships are formed in the spiritual realm these, are, these relationships were formed before, as they say, you were even a twinkle in your daddy's eyes. They were, they were formed before you were even a thought of being here. They were formed in the spiritual realm that you were going to encounter these people in your life at some point. So these are very spiritual relationships. So before life was ever breathed into our physical bodies, these relationships and these experiences were already set aside in the spirit realm for us to have. So everybody understand that this is a, these are spiritual relationships. These are not just people that are randomly coming into your life all willy-nilly. These people were purposed and you were purposed to meet these people at some point in your life. So everybody clear on how these relationships are formed. They usually are toxic. Yes, they can be toxic, but even in toxicity, we learn something. So, it's <laughs> crazy. So, yes, these form, these relationships are formed in the spiritual realm. Okay, so, our first relationship that we're going to talk about um, is the soulmate relationship. So, everybody pretty much knows, have, has heard of the term, a soulmate. Um... A lot of times people will refer to a soulmate that's of a romantic nature. But you, would you believe that most of the time your soulmates are not the romant of the romantic kind? They're, most of the time they're not. I'm not saying that, yeah, you've, I've learned a lot about myself. You definitely, we, we're learning, I think we're all learning a, a, a great deal about ourselves right now. Um... But people really believe that soulmates are primarily a romantic partner. And they can be. But most of the time, your soulmate relationships are everybody except your romantic relationship. You will find a soulmate in a parent, a sibling, a distant relative, um, friends, or people that we sometimes meet just as acquaintances so we need to understand that soulmates are not always a romantic relationship and a lot and and also you will find soulmates of your same sex so a soulmate doesn't always have to be of the opposite sex to you you can find soulmates in the same sex as you and you can have a multitude of soulmates over your lifespan. A multitude. It is not just designed that you're going to have one soulmate and that's going to be that person. No. It can be a multitude of people that you meet. It could be your soulmate. Um, but it's, it also could be a romantic partner too. Now, Now we're going to define what a soulmate is in the spiritual aspect. Again, soulmates are formed in the spirit realm. And they make an agreement that they will assist each other to learn important lessons that have to be, um, and have to be there for certain experiences that you will have in your life. Now, again, when soulmates are formed in the spiritual realm, these are two souls that are making an agreement. That when they manifest themselves into... Um, the earthly realm into our physical bodies they have agreed that there are certain lessons that they're going to teach each other um, they agreed that they're going to be there for each other for certain experiences in your life so they've already made this agreement that whatever goes on I'm going to be here for X, Y, and Z and I'm going to come into your life at different times sometimes to teach you lessons so we have any questions about what soulmates are in the spiritual definition. 
Again, these are people that are, we formed their relationships before we even were thought about. And uh, there was an agreement made that we, when we meet, we're going to teach each other some lessons because there's some lessons that we need to experience and some things that we need to experience together. Um, now, in this soulmate uh, relationship, it's going to be an ebb and flow of giving and receiving in this relationship. It's going to be a nice ebb and flow. There's not going to be just a taker and there's not going to be just a giver. There's going to be a nice ebb and flow between these two people. Naima says that she, um, that her nephew is her soulmate. Interesting. That's wonderful. So, there's a, always an ebb and flow between these two people. And it's a calming ebb and flow. It's not like an intense high and intense lows. There's always a calming ebb, uh, ebb and flow to this relationship. And there's, the biggest thing is there's a mutual respect in this relationship for these two people. Now, here's, I'm going to give you some indicators. Now, this is just not limited to this, but these are some indicators to kind of help you to identify your soulmate. Number one, your soulmates will share a similar energy frequency than you, with you. Um, there's going to be an easy draw to this person, and you're going to connect spiritually and mentally. So basically, you two guys are just going to... You're just going to get it. When you meet this person, your energies will match. You're going to have a, a natural connection. And it's going to be on a spiritual and on a mental level. And you're going to be like, this person just gets me. This is going to be someone that just gets you and you get them. So your energies will match. Um, the second thing is soulmates are going to, you will challenge each other. And they come into your life to make you uncomfortable in certain areas of your life. Because remember, they're there to elevate you on a conscious level. And they want to see you evolve and grow to your full potential. Um, these are also people that are going to be your biggest cheerleaders. And your successes are their successes. And being around them is going to always be... Um, when, you, when they have a success, you feel like it's yours. But the energy with them is going to always make you want to do better. Yeah, their, their presence always makes you want to do better and want to do more. And they make you believe that you can do more. They also, like I said, initially they come in and they make you uncomfortable where you are. Because that's their job. Because for them, they want to see you evolve. And because they've already made this agreement previously... Their job is to come in, make you a little bit uncomfortable, so you can rise to your potential. But these are going to be your biggest cheerleaders. Um, when something good happens to you, they're probably going to be more excited about it than you are. Um, and you're just going to want to do better for these people. You're just going to want to be better for them. Um, I, have, I know of one soulmate that I have, and I always say she is more excited about stuff happening to me than I am that I am. I'm just like, she gets, she just gets all excited about the littlest things, about the littlest achievements that I may have, and she's more over the top and cheering me on than I am. So, I know with her, it's a, she wants me to do better. She's always encouraging me to do better. She calls with the most outlandish, craziest things for me to do because she feels like that I can do anything. That is what a soulmate connection feels like to you. Um, another indicator that you have met your soulmate is they make you feel like you're part of a tribe. They make you feel like, like it's family, like it's, it's community, like we're all in this together and everyone plays a part. So you're going to feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself when you're with these people or when this person is in your life or however many soulmates that you have. You feel like you're in you're part of a tribe. You just you, you just do. Um and that everybody's working together for the common goal and that's to push everybody forward and for everybody to have this great life and to everybody to be happy. So you you're gonna always feel like you're part of a tribe and you're gonna feel safe with this person. Um if you have a romantic soulmate, 
keep in mind if you have a romantic soulmate typically romantic soulmates are there to prepare you for your twin flame they come in to make you better for the person that you're going to ultimately be with does that make sense does that, that make sense now I'm not saying that if you have a soulmate and it's in a romantic sense that you guys won't be together I'm not saying that what I am saying that if this is already been agreed upon in the spiritual realm that you guys were just going to be soulmates your soulmate is coming in to prepare you they're coming in to teach you lessons They're coming in to make you uncomfortable but they are basically grooming you for your twin for you to meet your twin flame or for you to meet your true love or the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with they're coming in to prepare you for that and I know that may seem like okay well that's crazy why would anybody do that but that's their job that's their job to do that all relationships are not supposed to end in happy ever after with someone sometimes there are people that come in and prepares for the real thing and you know that relationship we have it we enjoy it but when it's time for it to come to an end it's time for it to come to an end and we transition over and to the person that we're supposed to be with and we love and appreciate the person for all the time that they put into us it says your soulmates makes you better so that you will know how to heal your trauma so your twin do, can do what's needed absolutely they they serve a purpose they serve a purpose um the next thing is your soulmate is going to feel like your best friend And you're going to feel like you can be your most genuine and authentic self with this person. It's like you don't feel like you have to Thank be ashamed. You. You're never going to feel less than with this person. Um, this person just makes you feel good. And you feel like that you can open up to this person. And you feel very comfortable and you feel very safe with this person. And they're going to feel like they're your best friend. Okay. And lastly, soulmate connections can be lifelong. However, a lot of the time they're for a certain amount of time, depending on what purpose they serve in your life. So please do not take it personal if your soulmate just leaves your life one day for no apparent reason, nothing happened, there wasn't a fight, there wasn't a disagreement, there wasn't a blow up, they just left. It's because they've completed their assignment. They completed their assignment and it was time for them to move on. And you're going to be like, well what happened? I mean, we didn't have a fight, you know, you, you really kind of can be kind of a little bit confused as to why they left, but because it was time for them to leave. Now, they, sometimes soulmates don't stay away. Soulmates will come in and out of your life sometimes depending on what your need is and what the purpose is. So just as fast as they leave, they may pop back in. Um, you may find yourself going through certain things in your life and then all of a sudden this person shows back up. It's because they're there to help you through this certain particular situation. So they just may, be, they just may pop back in and you guys pick up where you left off because it just feels natural they serve their purpose and sometimes they leave again so just keep in mind they may not be there for the lifelong and then you may get some soulmates that are just lifelong I have a soulmate that is just he's lifelong he ain't going nowhere we have been friends and soulmates since we were in the seventh grade since we were 13 years old and he's my soulmate we never had a romantic we never had a romantic interest in each other he just came into my life and one day he just showed up we were in in, in junior high school together and I can't even remember how we became friends but we're still friends to this day and I'm 50 years old and we've been friends since we were 13 years old and he's my soulmate he, he just is 
He's he's a package deal. Like whoever gets me, we're packaged because it, it just is what it is. So that is briefly, you know, my description. Everybody's might be different on what a soulmate is. So at this point. Um, does anybody have any questions about soulmates that we can, or do you want to even talk about or share your experiences with a soulmate? Cousin, what happens when you are the one, you are the one all of these people need that you can't get your own life together? Okay, that's the work that you have to do on yourself. I mean, now that's, 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 to that's totally separate. Um, that's work that you have to do on yourself. And you have to uh, discern when it's time to step back and be selfish for the moment and work on yourself but soulmates don't come in to um, to pull you away to stress you out that's not that's not their purpose that, that's not their purpose so if somebody is in your life that's doing that more than likely they're not a soulmate soulmates are not there to stress people out they're there to bring love and joy and that best friend feeling and that companionship and that authenticity all of that and, and you'll know it. So, does anybody have a soulmate? No, soulmates ex exist, Toy. Soulmates are created in the spiritual realm. They do exist. And uh, since she's just joining us, I was just saying that a lot of people confuse soulmates as just being a romantic partner. And that is not true. Most of the time, your soulmate is not your romantic partner. Most of the time, your soulmates... Um, are your friends, your parents, your siblings, your children, uh, your friends, most of the time. Okay. Moving on then. So, we don't have any more questions on soulmate. Mm -hmm. and we'll, we can go back. It, it doesn't matter. Our next relationship is our karmic relationship and I know somebody said they're in one right now I say and blessings to you and I send you peace love and light if you're currently in one <laughs> Miss Andrea says I have two currently both women that are literally like sisters to me they push me and give it to me straight no chaser that is your soulmates those are your soulmates perfect definition that's your soulmate now, karmic relationships. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Karmic relationships are some of the most intense relationships that you can have. Typically, there's only one per lifetime that is a true karmic relationship. That's typically. I'm not saying that you're only going to have one. I'm not saying you're going to have any. But for the most part, there is typically one. And you will know it when you in it. Oh, Lord have mercy. Again, this relationship is born in the spirit realm. But this relationship repeats itself through lifetimes. Karmic relationships are based on a karmic debt. And it's usually a debt from several lifetimes ago. Basically... What happens in a karmic relationship is that two people come together and either one person hurts the other or they both hurt each other in the very worst way. And they never heal the hurt of that relationship. They never heal the relationship. They never heal themselves and they never heal the relationship in their lifetime. So what happens is once their physical body leaves the earth, their spirit their unhealed spirit must take residence in two new bodies. Thus continuing this relationship. And these two spirits will continue this relationship in different forms until they have healed each other. And they've he uh, healed the relationship. So that's why they say karmic relationships can last can, can transcend over lifetimes because it's the same soul over and over again but in a different body. So does anybody need me to stop right there and explain how karmic relationships come about?
These are two people that have met lifetimes ago, probably countless lifetimes ago. They were in this relationship. It didn't work out. They hurt each other or one person hurt the other one, but they never healed it. And by the time they left this earth physically, their spirits were still in pain and this relationship wasn't resolved and they had to find two new people to occupy their spirit and they start this relationship all over again. The goal of this relationship is to find the two people that are going to heal it. That is the goal of it. That is the goal of a karmic relationship is to finally find those two people that are going to have that spirit that they are, they are essentially reincarnated over and over and over again until they can find the two people that heal the relationship. Ah, they are both in the healing stage. Yes, good. That's my next point. They want to find two people that are conscious enough and aware enough of themselves to understand what is going on. Because a lot of times what will happen in a karmic relationship it will continue on, but they continue to get in, they, they continue to occupy the body of people that are not self-aware or they don't pick up the clues of what's going on. So they don't start to heal themselves. They don't start to heal what's going on. And it just became, it, it, again, it's a tumultuous relationship. And there's the debt is still not paid. Now, if they are blessed enough to find the two people that are going to heal this, it does not necessarily mean that this relationship is destined for them to be together forever. It could turn out that these two people stay together after they have healed, but more than likely, they're not going to stay together because it was never a pur the purpose was never for them to be together a lifetime. The purpose for them was to heal the hurt. So they may stay together and it may grow into a beautiful, beautiful relationship. It just says a soulmate could stay together and grow into a beautiful relationship. But the purpose of this karmic relationship was never for that. The purpose was for that soul to heal and for you to get the lesson. That's what it was for. So it may not necessarily end up the two people together. Um... It's, it's a beautiful thing once it's healed, but it takes a lot, a lot of work. It takes a lot of work, a lot of work for it. And some people are not up to the task of doing it, and they give up. Off and on for 15, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not an actual relationship. But we're not in an actual late relationship this time. That, but you know what? That may be something else. Naima, it may not necessarily be a karmic relationship, and I'm explaining to you when we get to twin flames. You may not be in a karmic relationship right now. Oh, good question. How do you know who the other person is? We are fitting. I'm going to give you some indicators that you have or that you are currently in a karmic relationship. Okay, good question. Parlayed right into that perfectly. Uh, here's some indicators on. Um. Whether or not you're in a karmic relationship. You instantly feel like you've known this person before. When you meet them. You'll find yourself saying things like. I feel like I already know you. Or you might say. You remind me of someone. I just can't figure out who it is. And the reason is. Is that you two people have met. In a previous lifetime. So when you meet this person. You feel like you've known them before. You you literally feel like you've known this person before, and you may say to, you may even say to them, "I just feel like I know you so well," or I, or I, I feel like you you remind me of someone, and you can't really pinpoint who it is, but they just remind you of somebody. That's one. The second thing is, the relationship takes off hot and heavy. It starts off at the gate hot and heavy. There's an instant attraction and it's very intense. You recognize what's going on. Y'all can fix this. 
you can heal it. You can fix it. But you, it's very emotionally draining. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a type of abuse. It's, it's a type of abuse. Whether I'll be, it's emotionally draining, either he's, that person is emotionally draining you, or you're doing it to yourself. You're allowing yourself to be in this relationship, and it's, it's, a, it's a form of abuse. So yeah, you probably are in a really heavy karmic relationship. The good thing about it is, is that you recognize it, and if the other person recognizes it, y'all can fix this. Y'all can really fix this, and it could turn out to be something very beautiful. But while you're in it, that shit is horrible. It's it's just horrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just horrible while you're in it. Ugh, it's just horrible. But it's just it but it feels like, oh my god, we going through all this passion and we going through all of this, and you feel like, oh, it's me and you against the world, and we doing all of this. No, it's just you and him against each other. <laughs> it's just you and him against each other. Because the world is like looking at y'all like what the hell are y'all doing why are they why are they together and y'all are just like fighting for this relationship and just fighting for it and it's just like why is it not working because we really want to be together and we're supposed to be together and it, and it feels like we're supposed to be together but y'all have so much work to do nobody's realizing that if y'all just it's, it's so much work to this so that is the characteristics and again there may be more indicators but those are some that you can look at and see, this may be a little karmic. This may be a little bit karmic, and this may be a little bit crazy. Okay, so do we have any questions so far about the karmic relationship, or do we want to go back? You have any questions about the soulmate relationship? Any of that? So I know one person has a karmic relationship. Has anybody else been involved in a karmic relationship? I have. Ooh, child, it was terrible. I, I, ooh, it was terrible. Terrible. But it had to happen. It had to happen, but once you're out of it and you've learned the lesson, if you learn the lesson, you come out so much greater with it. You come out so much better from it. You, re you really, really do. During the time that you're in it, it doesn't feel that way. It's feel like you're drowning, like you're never going to get out of it, and you just don't understand why this is happening. But once you get the lesson, and you heal it, and I still despise his guts. Mm. Well, I want you to work on that, because I don't want this to continue on, because if you still despise him, then this may not be the end of it. And then you're probably going to send that off once you depart from this, this world and your spirit transcends where it's supposed to go. It might go into somebody else and this just keeps going on. So how, why don't we heal it? Why don't we, why don't we heal it now? If you can. Try to heal it now. We don't want it to keep going on and on and on. We're, we're more of a conscious generation now. We're more conscious of what is not just not what's going on with us right now but we're more conscious of what's going to go on in the future and and for me I want to be a good ancestor when it's time for me to lead this world I want to be a good ancestor and I want to make sure I heal all my shit before I become an ancestor because I don't I don't want any of my generations to come and my granddaughters and all of that to have to deal with my shit because I didn't heal it before I left this earth. So let's try to be, let's try to be good ancestors. Let's just, let's, let's try. Let's just try to be good ancestors. I don't want to see any of my granddaughters, great granddaughters and granddaughters down the line having to go through some of the stuff that I went through. So I'm, I'm trying to heal as much of my shit before I leave this earth. So let's try to heal our stuff before we leave this earth. Okay, so... <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm trying to be a good ancestor. We recently, and I said my piece, but uh, you don't have to have anything to do with him. You don't. If you said what needed to be said, and your spirit feels good about it, th then we can just check that off then. Hello. Okay, so now we're going to go into the twin flame relationship. Oh, for me, this is like the most beautiful, beautiful story of how twin flames become.
come together. Okay, does anybody know, before we start, what, or have an idea of what a twin flame is? Just give me a, a quick, brief definition. I'm going to take a break. I got to go to the ladies' room. And y'all give me your definition. You don't have, don't Google it or anything. Just what you think uh, a twin flame is. And I will be right back because this tea is uh -oh. getting... All right, I'm back. So, oh my gosh. Okay, my twin flames. So, Nima says, a runner and a chaser, your soul that is split into a masculine and feminine entity. Two past souls that have loved before and continued through other people again and again. That's my guess. Oh, good guesses. That's good. Okay, so, a twin flame relationship. For me, um, the twin flame relationship, I feel like it's a relationship that we all want to have. Because that is the person that's divinely made for us in every way. So I pray that everybody on this live and on Instagram meets their twin flame. Because that's ultimately who you are. That is the ultimate relationship because it is really it is divinely made exactly for you. Okay, as with the other two, the twin flame relationship is formed in the spirit realm also. And how it is formed is when God created all of us. And he breathed his essence and his life into us. He split us in half. Two perfect halves. He made us into twins. And then God sent us out into the world, the two of us into the world, and it was our assignment to find each other again so that our souls can be one again. That is the most beautiful, beautiful thing that I have ever heard. I'm going to say it again. When God created us, he breathed his life and his essence into us, and he split us in half that we have our perfect twin. He sent us out into the world and our assignment was to find each other again. Now he didn't say it was going to be easy for us to find each other again. But our goal was to find each other. Now not everybody finds their twin flame. Sadly not everybody finds their twin flame. I ain't found mine yet. I don't, know what the, I don't know where the hell his ass is at. I ain't found mine yet. Has anybody on here feel like they found their twin flame yet? Because apparently mine got lost somewhere. Because <laughs> I haven't found it. Anybody have any twin flamers, twin flame relationships going on? I know. Now, I know of one twin flame relationship that I have actually seen. And I feel like. It's a twin flame relationship, and it's the relationship my brother, uh, my brother and his wife. They, they are the epitome of the twin flame. When I look at them, that's that's what I see. When when I look at them, they they just they have twin flame written all over them, they, and so I, I feel like that theirs is a relationship that they actually found themselves found found the, each other. Still figuring it out, girl. I don't know where he minds is. Like I said, he must have got lost. Okay, so we're going to go over some of the characteristics of the twin flame. Now, keep in mind, some of these characteristics are going to sound like the soulmate and maybe the karmic relationship. But it, there's differences. Okay, so when you first meet your twin flame, there's an instant connection. It won't be as intense as the karmic relationship. But it won't be as lighthearted as the soulmate. It'll be right there in the middle. You'll feel intrigued by this person. You'll get a little bit excited by this person. Because you guys are going to have a lot of the same things in common. And then you're so excited about finding somebody that feels like they're just like you. So you're not going to have the intensity of the karmic relationship. But you're not going to have the coolness of the soulmate. It's going to be like, it's going to be like a joy when you meet them. 
It's just gonna, it's like, you're just like you're gonna be meeting yourself. It's gonna be just like a joy when you meet them. Um, sometimes, and I don't know, I don't know when around y'all will get to this. Sometimes your hearts will beat at the same rhythm. And I don't know when you're gonna ever be able to, at some point in the relationship, you're probably like, you could test to see, you know, if your hearts beat in the same rhythm. But a lot of times you guys will have the same thoughts at the same time. Or you guys will finish each other's sentence. So y'all will be somewhere having a thought. And the next thing you know, you'll turn to that person and you'll say, you'll start telling them. And they'll be saying the same thing, exact same thing at the same time. So y'all going to have a lot, of, a lot of the same thoughts. And you finish each other's sentences. Um, now this is, this is one that's really, really good. Once you, once you guys start to get to know each other and start um, sharing your life experiences, y'all going to find out that y'all were physically in the same place a lot of the times and didn't know it. And examples of that would be y'all went to the same college or some kind of school or university and y'all didn't even know that y'all were at the same school at the same time. Y'all may have went to the same school. Um... You guys may have a lot of mutual friends, but y'all never met each other. But y'all have some of the same friends. Um, Twin Flames usually have um, in common a lot of places that they've traveled to. Um, you'll, you'll find out, you know, that you guys have traveled to a lot of the same places. You know, so you, you kind of understand that. So... Y'all have physically may have been in the same space. Um, y'all physically may have crossed each other's paths at some time. And y'all didn't know it. But y'all were physically around each other. So it's kind of weird like that. And you'll, you'll start to figure out, oh my God. We were, you know, did a lot of the same things. We were in a lot of the same places. You know, we traveled to a lot of the same places. Um, oh my God, we went to the same college. And then we would know that we were at the same college at the same time. Or... You know, you have friends that I know so-and-so and you know so-and-so. And, -so, and how, how, did, how did we never meet? But we have the same friends. Those types of things will be similar. Of course, you guys will love being around each other. But at the same time, you'll love being apart to do your own thing. So there's not going to be a lot of jealousy and neediness to this relationship. Y'all going to enjoy being together and enjoy being apart just as much. Because y'all understand... Y'all understand the, um, the degree of separation that you need from each other. So you'll never have that issue of um, we're not spending enough time together or, you know, I never see you. You guys are on the same wavelength when it, when it comes to I need my own space. So that won't be an issue. Um, you'll also have a spiritual wholeness about this person. Spiritually, y'all will match. You'll feel like, you know, I just feel... Not, I don't want to use the word complete because we should all strive to be a complete person before we meet, before we get into a relationship. But it'll be something about this person that just makes you feel whole. Like, oh wow, I mean, I didn't really know that I needed this person in my life or I really didn't know that I needed this type of relationship in my life. But it's here and it feels like it fits. So there's going to be a spiritual wholeness and a happiness with the two of you. Um, now the relationship can get rocky. It's not going to be perfect because we're two uh, imperfect people. You know, we still occupy a physical body and we're still two imperfect people. So it's not going to be perfect. But what will uh, keep you guys together is you guys will have the realization that you're better together than you are apart. And that will be the foundation that keeps you guys together. Um, during rocky times that y'all are better together than you're apart and this person will give you balance so you you won't have the anxiety um, you won't have the unsuredness that you get in some relationships um, you it'll be very very balanced very balanced now Naima brought up a good point there is a run what they call a runner and a chaser in this relationship and typically, this is when 
the two people, one person or maybe both of you, still hasn't figured out yourself. So what happens is you'll meet the you'll meet your twin flame. Sometimes um, y'all are not ready. Y'all are not ready. So you'll have one person that's not ready. And they'll they'll run away from the relationship. Even though they feel all this good stuff and they know something is special about this relationship, because they're not ready in themselves, they're gonna run. Then the other person is gonna chase for a little while. But a lot of time the chaser just sits still, kind of sits still. And, and that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to wait in the aspect of they're not gonna go and find them somebody else or date somebody else. But spiritually and mentally. They're willing to wait until you do finish your running. They're willing to wait. They know once you get yourself together that this can work. Now, it may switch roles during that time. It may switch roles. By the time the runner decides that they're ready, uh, then the chaser is just like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm kind of doing my own thing, da 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 And then the roles have switched. But these two people still know that this relationship is special. I'm better with this person than I am away from them. And however long this takes for this to work out, it's going to ultimately work out. Because these people are meant to be together. Once they, they cross paths, they're going to be together. Because they are divinely made to be together. They are one of, they're, they're the same person. They are the same person. So the likelihood of you meeting your twin flame and it not working out is not very high. I can't say that it won't happen. But it, it's just I, I can't see it not I can't see it not because you just your your soul is complete now it is it is complete now um, so that's what I, I pray for everybody on here that they meet their twin flame hi Veronica they meet their twin flame because that's ultimately the relationship that you want now keep in mind. You may never experience any of these relationships in your life. You may never experience any relationship. That does not mean that you can't go on to find someone that is beautifully made for, your, for you and have a wonderful and loving and healthy long relationship with that person. That does not mean that. I, the goal here is just to identify if these relationships have come into your life, how they've affected you, affected you and how you are to handle them because they're very very special relationships these relation, three relationships are very very special and a lot of times somebody may experience one or two uh, some people may experience all three of them but it's not to say that if you don't have these experiences something is wrong or you're missing something it just wasn't the experience that you were supposed to have it, it just wasn't. So don't think that you're just something's wrong with you because you haven't met your twin flame or you don't have any soulmates or, or all you uh, the only relationships you have feel karmic. There's no right or wrong to this. It's just all our individual experiences and we learn from all, all our relationships. We at least we're supposed to be learn, learning from all our relationships. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's all I'm going to say on that. So, um, I'm going to open it up. If anybody has any questions or want to add anything or maybe I missed something or you want to tell about your experiences, um, then uh, yeah, you guys have the floor. Don't mind me. I'm just trying to figure out this this thing over here. And keep in mind, um, this live is going to stay up. So if you missed it from the beginning or you, you had to pop out and you missed parts of it, you can always go back and look at it again because it's going to stay up on my page. And... Um, you can reference back to it. But if you want, you have any questions and I can try to go over real quickly before I let you guys go. If you're just joining us. <laughs> no, I don't think a car. <laughs> I don't think a car.
car I, no I don't think a karmic is a twin flame gone wrong I no because I don't believe in anything that is divinely made spiritually is something that's gone wrong they're just two different experiences and how you handle one can affect the other I'm gonna put it that way could affect you how, how you handle that karmic relationship could affect that twin flame but there's no such thing as is wrong this just all our experiences <laughs> just say so essentially karmic is twin flame gone wrong Karm and, and don't, okay I don't want to make karmic relationships seem so bad because they're really not bad if if you really just get the lesson if you really just get in there and start figuring some stuff out you don't have to go through all the craziness that can come along with it I think what happens is like I said we are not conscious of self a lot of the times so when the when it comes along we don't know what's happening we just think this is a you know another relationship and um, I'm gonna handle it like the last one I did or it's not me it's them no but if we just taking the time to try to figure out what is really going on here why are we having such a hard time why is it so intense why do I feel like I want to be with this person but I feel like I can't because we have all this stuff going on. if we would just stop and figure that out the karmic relationship does not have to be as heavy and as hard as we make it well like I said, the karmic prepares you for the karmic. Both these soulmate and the karmic prepares you for a twin flame. Um, I'm going to say, I think with the karmic relationship, I think we get hurt so badly in it that sometimes we just shut down the part of us that's going to attract the twin flame I think sometimes we just kind of sh kind of shut down and we miss our opportunity with our twin flame does that make sense because the karmic has been so rough on us does that make sense because we don't all click we don't all clear up our karmic debt we don't all clear it up and it and it could it could it could keep you from your twin flame it, it, it really could but I don't want to believe that. I, I want to believe that that we're all now in a different level of consciousness now, and um, we're more aware, and so now we can figure some stuff out a little bit quicker than we would before, and and now we know that things that we do in our relationships carry over ultimately into our happiness, and I want to be happy, so I can't keep fucking around with this karmic relationship I gotta get this shit straightened out cause I don't wanna miss my opportunity my twin flame might be standing right there and I'm fucking around with you I gotta clean this shit up and, and get going on with my life so we're gonna be more conscious in our relationships we're gonna be more conscious we're gonna be more aware we're gonna stop turning uh, a blind eye to these obvious red flags that come along with karmic relationships we are going to stop doing that we're going to stop making shit up in our heads to fit what we want to fit and we know it's not working I myself <laughs> have had confirmation like four times now about a certain situation and as conscious as I am and aware as I am of who I am I'm still a woman and I'm still sometimes not wanting to do what I'm supposed to do because I'm trying to make this into something else and I know damn well this is not what I'm trying to make it into it never has been and it never will be so there ain't no point of me dragging this shit out but that's me being hard in it but it's also prolonging my twin fame connection I'm just, I'm prolonging it because I won't do what I'm supposed to do. Yes, I have to start from the beginning because, yes, you know it's going to be up. It's going it's to be up. So, um, 
here's the deal we all have free will in everything so we control what we allow okay you don't have to let things in your life relationships in your life just happen willy-nilly you have control over that we have free will over everything so because we have free will we can change things we don't have to just let them play out because oh, okay I just feel like this is just the way it's gonna be no it doesn't have to be that way you can actually do some stuff to change that um, and again that comes with being conscious of yourself and aware of what's going on and stop turning a blind eye to to obvious things that are going on and stop operating out of fear because I think we do a lot of things out of fear and we stay in a lot of situations uh, because we we fear the unknown and sometimes we stay in situations because um, even though it's not the best but I know what to expect from it and it's comfortable even though it may be uncomfortable so I'm uncomfortable I'm comfortable in my uncomfortableness because I know what to expect expect from this and I don't know if I get out of this maybe the next thing is going to be even worse but what if it's even better what if the next thing is your twin flame just walks up and there it is and there he or she is hey boo and uh but um I didn't want to put I didn't I, I just wanted to <laughs> Shane Shane is popular <laughs> I just wanted to come and talk to you about those relationships help you be able to identify those relationships um, now you can kind of sit and reflect on some relationships that you've had and they may have fallen into one of these three categories and we just going to do better because we know better now so um, if no one else has any questions I'm not going to hold you guys any longer um, I hope everyone is taking this uh, time to um, really just sit still with your thoughts um, I think this is um, even though we're going through a difficult time I think this time is a blessing because in all honesty if this hadn't happened a lot of us would have never sat still and started to figure out where direction we want to go in our lives what we want to do um, um, it just would not do something that I love to do I love talking about spirituality I love talking about manifesting I love talking about you know things that normally people don't talk about and I you know I love connecting with with spirit and I love connecting and and, and figuring out that the universe is here to help us and it's a lot of growth. You're absolutely right. People are growing like every day and they're tapping in, tap into themselves. And it's a beautiful thing. I just think it's a beautiful thing. So please enjoy this downtime because once this thing passes, more than likely most people are going to go back to their old ways and their old selves. And I will say another thing. One thing that this, this, this uh, pandemic did uh, do, it lets you l see people for who they are and who they really are because now you know how selfish some people can be in this world who the hell goes out and hoards toilet paper why would you do that that just, just blows my mind but that's the level of selfishness that we live in in this world so this lets you know you know what kind of people that you're dealing with around you I'm so glad I, I was able to see that but I'm going to get off my soapbox. I love you guys. You, you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Uh, the rest of this evening. If you're going back to work. You have a wonderful work week. Um, if you're still at home. Enjoy the time at home. Um, be safe. I'm always going to tell you to be safe. Use universal precautions. Um, practice social distancing. 
but do not start stop living your lives enjoy your lives don't let this craziness and this hysterics and this all of this feed into your head and make you crazy if you need to disconnect because sometimes you need to disconnect from the news and social media and all this craziness just disconnect but enjoy your lives um we are divine people we are protected divinely and uh we're going to get through this together so without further ado you guys have a good evening oh and look be on the lookout for my next live we are going to be talking about manifesting through the power of sex and masturbation it's gonna be a good one so good night bye bye